Today's lesson is on painting landscapes that are too green. And that can be a problem, especially in the spring and summer, when all the greens look the same and your painting can be kind of lifeless, not much color. So I've opened a small online workshop that deals with how to mix greens more effectively, how to mix a variety of greens and deal with the problems that comes with a, a monotonous looking landscape. So enroll now to gain confidence in painting green landscapes of spring and summer, and you'll find the link in the description below. So now let's get to today's lesson. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about mixing greens, how to get a variety into our greens, because greens are, are that one color, especially in the summer, spring, where it just takes over, and it's hard to find a variety of greens. And we usually think in terms of, well, if I need more greens, I need to get more green paint. All those pre-mixed greens, there's, there's tons of them. And some can be helpful, I, I think, to use as maybe accent colors. But we want to think of our greens more organically, more natural looking. And the best way to do that is to stick more with primary, secondary colors of just blue and yellow. Uh, maybe some green in it too, but not much. Blue and yellow make a more natural looking green. But then we want to get variety. We don't want our greens to look like this photograph. All these greens in here are way too saturated, way too strong. This was taken with an iPhone, so the color's kind of garish looking. Uh, not much variety in the color. It's just a basic, you know, Viridian and Cad Yellow almost. Uh, too strong of a green, not real natural looking. Values are good in the sense that the trees and the lights are darker than the lights on the flat plane. And the shadows are darker than the shadows on the flat plane. But there's not much variety. So when we think of pushing those colors of green, we want to think in terms of colors from the color wheel. So that I have, you know, my palette, I have orange, red, violets, red, orange from the color wheel, a yellow, orange. So I want to use all those varieties with the blue and yellow to come up with subtle color changes. First thing I want to do, as always, is recompose the photograph. Most of my photographs are wide-angled views where I take in as much as I can because I know I'm going to bring it back and crop at home, either on the computer or in thumbnail drawing or sometimes both. So I want my focal point here is the house, so I want to zoom in more. There's way too much greens around here at the bottom, too much sky on top. And my focal point is the house, not grass or sky or even trees. So I want to crop it, making the center of interest the house. Again, I want to think in terms of different shapes and sizes. A horizontal view would look best because the house is horizontal. Now I could make it more of a square view or even vertical. This would make a nice vertical composition here, but I have to crop it so it works horse, uh, uh, so it works vertically. And that works pretty good. That would make a nice composition. I've geared it towards the vertical, the shape of the house. I want enough foreground to lead the viewer's eye in. That's actually a pretty good composition. I do want a bit more of a horizontal instead, but again, I could get a square out of this. This is a good photograph in the sense that I get several different compositions out of it. And as I zoom into the house, I don't want to show the whole house. I want to crop it some, leave some space outside. If we get everything in the picture frame, it looks kind of crowded and cramped. And we want to stay away from that. So I'm going to get enough sky and background trees. I will cut off the house right there. Get more of a rectangular shape. So I will zoom in a bit more into the house. Now the house is more the focal point and cut out a lot of that unnecessary sky and, and foreground. Enough foreground that I can lead the viewer in there with a variety of colors in the green. The house is set up pretty good. The values are strong. I'm going to push the values a bit more. I don't think there's enough contrast in this photograph between the light and dark. So I want to push it a quite a bit more. A lot of the darks in here get too dark. These just kind of go black, these bushes. So I want to get enough light in there to get some color. Same thing back in here, way too dark. I want to create some distance also. So as these darks go back further, they'll get a bit lighter and cooler. So I want to break the background into levels here. I have this level 
of trees that are kind of in the middle ground. And then I want to separate that from trees so I can create any kind of shape I want back in there. We're not tied to the photograph. I want to create a background level of trees. Then there's going to be the fourth, which would be these really further back areas back in here. So that I have um, one, two, three, maybe four different values of greens gradually getting cooler. So all this background behind these two trees would be really on the bluish green side, maybe even the blue violet, because I'm trying to create more depth than what I see in here. And again, all the greens look the same, which is a common thing when you photograph landscape on a summer day. So color-wise, I want to start breaking up the background. Again, cooler as it goes back. I want a lot of color in this area in here. In the foreground here, a lot of color, a lot of cooler color in the background just to make this go back and, and make it look flat. If I get the greens back here just as warm as the front, it, this foreground is going to flatten like this. But if I get it gradually cooler as it goes back, it's going to flatten or it's going to lay down and then go back into the distance. So using temperature both on the ground and in the trees to create more, more distance. So I, I did some changes here computer-wise, using a lot of blue-green back in here, a little warmer as it comes forward. So I have a slightly warmer green here and even more warm there. And then a lot warmer down in here and a lot more variety down here. I'm going to have variety up in the trees, but not as much as the flat ground because it's closer. So the difference here, all the greens looking the same, some value change, but no variety in the greens. And I'm thinking in terms of blue-green in the background trees, blue-green in the back of the flat plane. And as the trees get closer, they get warmer, more yellows and oranges in them. Same thing with the grass or the flat ground. It has a lot more variety of uh, color in there also. I'm thinking in terms of the color wheel. My basic green is going to be blue and yellow, not viridian, and not different tubed greens like sap green. I've used sap green some and, and it has some usefulness for me to, as far as getting some darker greens with a little more color in it. But I get more harmony and I get more color variation when I stick with ultramarine blue, cad yellow light, and then I can vary that by just adding colors from the color wheel to it. So in front here, I've got blue and yellow. And when I say blue, I mean ultramarine blue. And when I say yellow, I mean cad yellow light. That's my basic green. Here I've added a little bit of alizarin to it, a little bit of violet, a little more blue or some viridian. Viridian here is more of a modifying color. It modifies the green. It changes it a little bit but I don't use it as a basic green. I got some deoxazine purple, more ultramarine blue or cerulean blue back in here. Same thing back in here, I might add more blue, ultramarine or cerulean, just to make it go back a little bit more. And there's a difference between ultramarine and cerulean, so if I make a green with cerulean, it's gonna look different than ultramarine. So that's another variation I could use. Same thing with the house, if we look at the house, I've pushed the darks a bit darker and cooler and started breaking up the color in the roof. I started with a basic blue and alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue and crimson. And then same thing there, I will add some orange to it, some uh, yellow to it, some viridian to it, just to break it up. And when I say I'll add it to it, I add it to the pile on the palette. The main idea is the blue, but the house being very white, I'm going to talk about uh, breaking up the color in there. So if I start with a basic violet, if I see the shadow on the white house as a violet, muted violet, or muted blue, I'm going to have a lot of color in there. A lot of color because of the light on the ground bouncing up. Got a lot of reflected light, reflected light here. Then I have just variation in color, just because the, the flat area of the house is big enough that there has to be some subtle color change. This is um, in the Tetons in the summer. And we can see some variation in the greens down in here from flowers, some uh, bluish violet grass, you know, some blue greens, some violets in the grass in here, mainly because of the, this different colored grass and wildflowers. But I really want to push cooler greens and colors in here and then in the grass sunlit grass and the uh, uh, sunlit trees, I really want to push more warmer colors using yellows, oranges, red oranges, red violet. So a lot of color variation, but my 
main or basic green is still ultramarine blue and cad yellow light. So here's the changes. I'm going to think always thank value first of all, even though we're focusing on color. I want to think in terms of improving the um, contrast because there is some nice lighting here, some kind of dramatic lighting, but if I push it stronger, it's going to have a bit more impact. So in the background, again, ultramarine blue, a touch of cad yellow, but a lot of violet, deoxazine purple, and or a lizard and crimson, just to kind of knock it down. Same thing with the shadow in the foreground the basic blue and yellow, but the shadow in the foreground has more yellow in it. And the shadows, as they recede and go back, they get bluer and bluer. Kind of a cool green, enough yellow in it, and it's more on the green side in here. And more blue for the blue-green back in here. And more blue, less yellow as it recedes back into the distance. It gradually gets bluer and bluer. So the foreground shadow is cool, but it's a lot warmer than the shadow back in here. If I don't have that difference, there really won't be much depth. So again, shadows are still cool in the foreground, but comparatively, they're warmer than the background shadows. But I've got oranges here, I've got crimson, some violets, maybe some viridian or cerulean with a little bit of yellow in it back in here, just to vary it from this ultramarine blue and cad yellow. I generally always have a bit of orange in the ultramarine blue and cad yellow just to knock it down a little bit. So my strongest yellow green in the sunlight has a bit of orange or red orange in it to keep it from being too too garish. But again, pushing that contrast first, darker darks. Again, without getting too dark, I don't want to uh, have it look blank or, or lacking any color because even dark shadows have a sense of color to them. Value first and then thinking variation of color. Same variation in the trees here. It's just going to be slightly darker in the trees and the lights than the lights on the ground because the trees are vertical and the ground is a flat. So looking at a couple of paintings here. This is George Innes, probably more autumn than summer, but you can see the variation of green, a yellow green, kind of a cooler yellow green, cooler green green, not blue green or yellow green, but just green. And again, variations of warm greens up in here. These have a bit more reds in them here, a bit more yellow in it here. So quite a bit of variation. Then back in here, the greens get muted. They're yellow greens, but they're muted with cooler or complementary colors to make them recede. So a lot of color variation and real subtle. It goes from here, uh, getting a little bit lighter, a little more orange then a little more blue or viridian in it. So a lot of subtle change, even within just one flat area in there. This is uh, Paul Loritz. He was a California Impressionist, early 20th century. And you can see the greens on the trees here. More of a green green, more reds and oranges in the green. A little more yellow in here, a lot more yellow and orange in here. So again, don't think past the color wheel. Don't think in terms of fuchsia or premix colors or designer colors. Just think color wheel and add those colors to the green. Make sure they're the same value. So you're not changing the value, you're just changing the color. Now he keeps the shadows very simple, very cool. You can see the variation of green in here. Again, probably starts with one overall green like this, puts it in there, and then starts scrubbing in a variety of different colors, from yellow to yellow-orange, red-orange, violet, a lot of variation. And it's not much detail. There is some detail in there when you see small darks and lights. That's detail, but what makes it look more finished is the color variation. A couple of more. This is uh, Aldro Hibbard, early 20th century, East Coast painter. Painted outside a lot, and when you go outside and look at greens, you see a lot more variety than you do in the photograph. Here the greens are really towards the orange and red side. Still warm, and here over, over here they're more yellow green to green, some violet, some blues. You can really see the variation of color. And then back in here, it gets very muted. So if you go from here to here to here, the colors gradually get more muted and gradually get a little bit cooler. But I can have greens that are a lot more towards the orange or red-violet side than they are towards yellow-green. And that's just a matter of adding lizard and crimson to make them look more red-violet 
or red orange to make them uh, which is what these are here these are more red orange greens so don't think of green as just green think of green in combination with every color on the color wheel and you get a lot more variety this is one I did in the Tetons and it was summer late August I pushed the aspens here they were really bright yellow green I just pushed them more yellow just to get away from green but I'm looking for subtle variations here and here and I've got three different greens back in here again they get more muted as they recede trees get bluer and bluer as they go back they're more of a green green up in here and then as they recede they get still blue green but more on the blue side till it's almost just more blue more of a muted blue in the background. But I'm looking for a variety of greens. Of course, I have the wildflowers here to help me get some color variation. Still, the important thing about the greens, even if I'm just using one green, is to get the color change from the vertical and the flat and the slanted. So get that value change first, then you can start breaking up the color as much as you need. Mm -hmm.